Hi friends! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the end of month faves and fails for the month of April. And there are some things I don't even know if I have in my collection anymore because I have decluttered them and they were brand new from the new BoxyCharm slash Ipsy. I think we have some feelings on that that I'm gonna even dive into in this video, I think. And I'm gonna tell you some stuff I am loving though and that's gonna include some skincare, some makeup, and some fun lifestyle pieces that I have been loving all month long. So if you love these chatty, just kind of hang out videos with me, a lot of you say that this is like one of your favorite videos, but then sometimes I don't hear from any of you. So just let me know. Do you like these videos with a thumbs up? Maybe comment below. Grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your lemoncello water, get comfy, and let's, let's talk about some stuff I even failed on this month and had to redo for this video. You ready? Cheers! Y'all, I even messed up on one of my reviews earlier in the month, so this is really gonna be an opportunity for me to tell you what do I think of the things I've been trying this month, but also things that I have been trying for a while or rediscovering. So kind of starting from the top, I like to start with how I start my mornings or my evenings the night before, and that is some skincare. So you guys influenced me and said, use this product, try it for a while and just trust, trust the process. And you guys have been so darn right. I'm positive that I have spoken about this recently, likely even in my last phase and fails, but now I have another month under my belt of using this product religiously. And I definitely notice a difference in the brightness of my skin, specifically under the eyes. And thank you for telling me about it. So I won't go into it too in depth, but I have to give you like this, this is honestly what I'm using. The Better Skin Co. Bright Right Now Eye Oil goes under the eyes. It's for depuffing, but it really helps for the dark circles under the eyes. I do a drop of this every single morning. I do kind of like a generous large drop because then I can go here and here, pull it up a little bit on the eyes and move on with my morning. And I have to tell you, that has been one of the biggest things that I've done, which is such a small thing, that I've noticed such a difference in my skin. And I love it when things are actually working, not just either in the immediate or you have to wait a while to see it, but over time, I'm still seeing results from this, which is great news because I'm already, I'm not quite midway through, but I knew this product would go quickly once I realized how good it was. It's still like here, <laughs> so not quite midway, but I'm definitely starting to be like, okay, how do I make the stuff I love last and what, what can I still reintroduce that I trust? So I've been using this in the mornings and my trusty Mud Masky Vitamin Infused Eye Serum in the evenings. This combination makes this entire section of my face look so good, look so clean, look so much brighter that I have honestly not been really wearing makeup out when I'm not filming or on days that are really busy or I'm working but I still want to feel a little put together I feel like just this skincare alone is really helping me there is one other piece that I do that is some skincare that I did get this month that I'm going to tell you about in a minute that I just use a little bit and then I pretty much leave the house even go running errands hang out with my husband on a lazy Saturday or go do stuff together with no makeup on. I can't believe it because you guys, this is your late, I, I'm in my late 30s. This is what my late 30s skin is looking like thanks to some great products. So I'm just telling you, don't sleep on some things if one, you know you have dark circles under your eyes or you're just like, oh, my skin's looking really dull. I could really use to brighten it up. I talk about this one specifically for, I've talked about this for years, but now I've introduced this as well. And I just see such a difference in the section of my face that tends to make me look more tired or a little bit more aged. These are working so good. I didn't even think I had like extreme dark circles under my eyes. And I guess I really don't, but just the amount of brightness that happens throughout to even out the skin makes such a difference. So even if you're like, well, girl, I don't really have dark circles, this will still help you. It really will. And I still love it so much. Now, the other thing that I am doing, like after I use those, if I'm like, you know what? I want to let my skin breathe. I want to appreciate the, all the skincare routine that I have been doing for years now on this face. I don't always want to have to cover it up. So I got something from a BoxyCharm that I was like, this, this could make me break out. I don't know. I have actually been using this and it feels a little old school because of the style of skincare it is, but I use it almost like makeup. It's a little interesting. I've not had good luck with this brand either, so I'm pretty excited this is working. This is 
Ola Hendrickson. This is the Ola Hendrickson Banana Bright Vitamin CC Stick. This is something I got from my BoxyCharm. Let's call her really what she is. She's Ipsy, we'll get there in a second. You're gonna need some extra tea for that, okay? I tend to go to more creams. Even this oil was really kind of like throwing me out of my comfort zone. So I was like, am I gonna use this? Yeah, yeah, I have. Now, I'll be honest, I use a generous amount. I definitely layer it up under the eyes and I use my fingers to pat it in and I think this does a fantastic job. Put this here, maybe on the paler part of my skin here. So you can see it just brightens everything up, kind of makes it even. And I have found some things that are the banana style are a little too yellow for me. This I find can melt in really nicely. It does have some luminosity, so it does kind of just reflect off of that area that may have a little bit more shadow, a little bit more darkness. And I've just worn this out since I've been doing so much dedicated skincare routines. I have just been wearing this out to a lot of things. Maybe I'll put a little bit of makeup in my brows and go and I've not been mad about it. It's actually been something I've been doing pretty regularly since I received this product because I feel like it just kind of cancels out anything that would have maybe still made me look tired or maybe it made me look like I wasn't as put together because it does have a little glowiness. So it just like reflects and makes you look a little bit more awake, a little bit more vibrant. Speaking of shiny, I feel like I am looking a little shiny right now. So I'm going to, um, or glowy. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of powdering down. And I think that's because today you guys, I, I, a powder that I have been loving and a powder that I'm not so sure I'm loving even though I rebought it to test it again, now that she's cruelty free, I feel like I maybe overdid it on a glowy powder today. So um, I'll tell you in a second, but stay tuned because we've got to have some powder talk because I like some blur, but I'm worried I'm getting a little too shiny right now because I have the too much gene. So really, I've just been embracing my own skin probably for the past month or so, and I'm loving what I'm seeing. I'm loving how my skin is looking. Now I am now trying something else that is new for my skin, and I teased it to you guys on Instagram, and if you are not following me there, you are missing out on the updates of what goes on behind the scenes between videos and me looking a little ridiculous a lot of times as well. And I am trying all the things for you to let you know what is working. And this is a LED five color light therapy mask. And this is from the brand Enlan. And thank you so much to Enlan for sponsoring this portion of my video while I test this and let you know, how is it doing? Um, you guys, I did this today on camera just for you. So you guys know, I go through it. So you guys can know, is something worth your dollars or not? I'll be honest, I have always wanted to try one of these LED face masks to see how does the light therapy work for my skin. I've told you guys I have some hyperpigmentation in certain areas. I'm always working on my big bossy pores. So I want to try new things, even if I look a little silly on camera showing you guys how it works, because if it works, then, then it's worth it, right? And I love that this product does not break the bank. This is $65.99 and I will have a discount for you, but let me tell you what I'm thinking of this product so far. I've read this, some of these things can cost a lot of money. So I really like that this particular product here is fully waterproof. You can wash it. You can definitely see in the B-roll footage I'm inserting here for you that it goes through different colors and there's five different color therapies that you can do. I personally right now am working with the green color because I'm working on the hyperpigmentation. Like I mentioned, I want to lighten up some of these marks, but it does red light for anti-aging, yellow light for whitening, green light for less spotting, that's what I'm working on, um, blue light for anti-acne, and purple light for anti-wrinkle. There are a lot of lights in here, and I was really shocked, even though I look a little silly, how comfortable this is. It does have two eye holes, and it has two like protectors on each of the eye sockets here, so that way you do have some protection on your eyes as well. A mask like this is supposed to give you the most mask absorption and hydration when you are using something like this. The first time I used it, I did not have on a skincare mask underneath it, whereas today I did put on one of my favorite face masks. 
underneath it because I wanted to kind of see the difference. Was I seeing a difference in my skin? Was I getting more hydration the second time and the first time maybe a little bit more brightening with the spotting? I'm still investigating this right now behind the scenes, but this is something that I'm actually enjoying using because I'm working on my skin a lot because I'm setting up the canvas for the rest of the makeup and the rest of my life. So I'm wanting to work on specific target areas and I love that this is working on it for me also has three different levels of adjustable heats. The first day I didn't do any heat and today I did the first level of heat and I did feel it kind of warming up on top of the skincare mask that I was using and it didn't feel too hot. It didn't feel uncomfortable. It just kind of felt like it was working it into my skin and then when I took the mask off I definitely felt like my skin was super hydrated. Now could that have been because I had a really good skincare mask going along with this? Possibly. So I'm going to keep using this and let you you guys know do I see any long-term results because that I know you all want to see is am I going to be seeing any of the hyperpigmentation lifting do I look a little bit more youthful more brightened as I'm using the different colors on this for the LED light mask and I'm excited to keep playing with this I will go ahead and link them below you can check out their official account I'm going to be leaving the information here along with the discount code that they are giving you guys I love when a brand will work with you guys and give you a discount so you can try things too at a better deal you can get 20% off of this mask that's already pretty inexpensive if you ask me $65.99 when I've heard of some of these in the hundreds I was pretty excited about that um, using this code right here you will be able to get 20% off so this is what I'm currently using right now and currently testing trying seeing how I like it so far after two uses I'm pretty pleased I'm not seeing any breakouts either like I said it's hundred percent waterproof so you can wash it in between things keep it all clean and easy for your next use so I'm excited about this and thank you so much to Enlon for sponsoring this portion of today's video now I want to talk to you guys about something I failed on I feel pretty not pretty hard but enough that so many of you guys were commenting in my last boxy charm video you were like hey girl go back use this drunk elephant product again but use it just as a blush don't use this with your skincare use it as a liquid blush and because that's just not a top of mind type of makeup I do I was like I was editing the video going why didn't I just use it without skincare why didn't I do that? Because I said, I read that you could use it with skincare and that's the last thing that registered in my brain because this still looks like skincare to me in this bottle. <laughs> so today, I went ahead and used only this on top of my foundations and concealers and I did build her up intentionally to see how it would look because I knew I'd be putting some powders over it because I am testing some powders and I think it is a very subtle blush. I also think it was way easier to blend out with my fingertips and a sponge when I was using this without skincare. So now I've tried it both ways. Really, I was being a scientist and you guys were along for the ride. So thank you for also reminding me, hey girl, it's a blush. Use it, use it as blush drops, okay? So I did that today and I'm actually pretty pleased with how it looks. It is super duper subtle. Um, I don't think it has a color shade, does it? It's just the O Blues Rosy Drops Goulet Roses Fortify and Blush. So I don't think it has an actual shade on it but it does kind of just go with the coloration of my skin. It's not like overwhelming. I did not put on any other blushes on top of it, although I think I could have because I'm not seeing too much rosiness. So if you're a girl that loves like, girl, I need all the blush, you may use this and then a topper, or you may use this with a heavier hand than me. I did layer it up, but I could definitely say, I don't see too much blush, but I think I see just enough for my personal liking. So you guys were right. You were right. Now I need to get to that point though of now I've tried it. I've tried the better way to use it. Will I remember it? Will I remember it? And will I want to use it? Because as you know, if you have been checking out every upload I've been doing this month, I am deep into a declutter right now. And I just did my blushes and face products, which were the face palettes. They were the bronzers, the blushes, and the highlighters. So I just cleaned out this drawer. So I should be able to see this so I don't forget it, but I need to also make a committed like resolution to myself as, as I've gone through these drawers, I need to be mindful of what am I still using, what am I not, or I need to do more declutters in the future so it doesn't get as crazy again. So. Hopefully we'll see, am I going to be using this? Now, I also feel like I really need to say with my declutter series, it has been ongoing. And next, I want to hear what you guys want to see next. Is it going to be foundations? Is it going to be powders? Because y'all, I got to talk about some powders. And I realized this morning how many powders. I have like two huge caddies 
of powders. And I just look at it and I'm like, I'm just reaching for the ones that I know and trust. So I've been trying to get back into one that I just purchased and I'm like, you guys tell me that it is like almost a dupe for something that I told you I love. So let's talk about some powders for a second because that may be one of the next sections I need to do my declutter with. Because I got too many and I'm not using them. You guys know what I have been using though because this is probably, I don't know, my millionth one. Okay, that's dramatic. Um, this is probably my 52nd one in my lifetime because, and that's probably not an exaggeration, this is the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance Powder and you can see, you can see the pan I have on her. I use this every single morning under the eyes, down the nose, in the crease of the eyes to prep my skin, prep my face because this powder is super creamy, super easy to use, does not give texture, doesn't pull away the makeup. It's something I can trust. I have used her forever and I was so heartbroken when I couldn't use CoverGirl because for a while they weren't cruelty free and that's when I had to go on my long journey of powders and I'm back on my CoverGirl BS ever since it became cruelty free again. So I love this. I love, love, love this. Had to rave about her as I'm talking about powders because she's the staple in my life but she also distracts me from other things that maybe I should be exploring um, but she's so easy to use throw her as a compact too. So you could throw her in the, the uh, purse on the go kind of thing. So I told you guys this brand I have hit or miss love with, but this powder that I got from a boxy charm is so good. It's the real her set your goal blurring powder. She's so good. This is like a blurring veil. She's a little bit warmer toned too. So I feel like what I do a lot is go in with a looser blush. Be blush, brush, because um, I do see a lot of sparkle. And if I do too much sparkle, because I just opening this, I see the sparkle. And now is it because this powder is a little bit deeper in tone? Maybe, but I feel like this looks so beautiful. It can also be a lot. So that's why I said just powder down a second ago, because I was like, this could be a lot. Um, I don't even use really a highlighter when I use this type of a blurring powder, because I feel like there's already the luminosity and I am oily skin and the warm weather is coming. So that means, you know, I can look a little oily. But a lot of you guys told me when I brought back in some Wet n Wild into my collection, you said, am I, am I wrong? Am I remembering it wrong? That the Photo Focus Translucent Wet n Wild Powder is supposed to be a dupe for something like that or very close to. So here's the thing about this. This one is a translucent. Am I making this up? Yeah, it's translucent. I have been testing it today on my hands, on my face, throughout time with makeup. I don't, I had not seen that. I was like, I must have the wrong powder. But then today I swatched it on my hands and I was like, well, they do look the same on my hands. And I, maybe I just need to do a side by side face off. And I kind of wished I had done that after I put them on today. I was like, oh, I should have done the whole face. I should have just done half of it. Cause I started with my wet and wild girl. And I was like using a big blush. blush. I keep saying blush now. Using a big brush to really like get all over the face. It's a loose brush too, as you can see. So I wasn't packing a ton on. I was sweeping it, allowing it to kind of get in all the areas to really powder down your girl's face. And then I went back in with the set your goals. And then I was comparing and contrasting on my hand and what I can see. Now I will say this, looking at it even right now, I'm going to show you what I see. This is the set your goals from real her. I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up on camera, but it looks like Edward Cullen in a cap. It is glittery. It is sparkly. It definitely has that Tinkerbell sparkle immediately when you look at it. This is the Wet n Wild. I don't see that blurring property of the sparkliness. Now, that's not a bad thing because you may be hearing that going, I don't want to look like a, a vampire and Edward Cullen. Is that reference too old now? Tinkerbell's even older, but I feel like that's kind of like a standard tried and true one. I feel like this doesn't have that, that luminosity to it that makes it blurring and that property in that regard. I don't think this is a bad powder necessarily as from the Wet n Wild, but I just, I'm not finding I loved it like a diehard like I used to back in the day. Um, but I am really loving the Set Your Goal Real Her powder because it blurs. That's what that luminosity does is it like diffuses and blurs things. So it looks more youthful, more even on the skin, hides the texture, all of the things. So am I miss? understanding what this one is. Am I just wanting this to be something it's not? I don't know. But I have so many translucent loose powders that are 
in the good range that I'm just like, do I need to keep this? It's just why I, I started this conversation with, I'm wondering if I need to do powders soon because I have my, my, my powder collection runneth over and I'm not using them, I'm not using them all. And I need to rediscover what's working, what's not. So I may start doing like some halvesy face days and being like, which, which side of my face made it through the day without looking rough, which one looks more blended, all of the things. I don't think this is bad, but I'm not seeing the blurring properties. I'm also not seeing the last ability um, and the smoothness with this as much, which is kind of disappointing me personally. Next, because I just reminded y'all I'm talking about my declutters. I found stuff in my collection that I didn't know I had anymore. It's that intense sometimes, you guys. I didn't even know. Didn't even know. I was like, what? I, I have a, a whole Ofra bronzer palette with a little bit of Rodeo Drive in her, and I didn't know? How did I not know? How did I not know? But I didn't. I didn't know. So I'm rediscovering her today. I was like, did I not remember this midi palette in the Face It Medium collection or name here because I didn't like it? Um, it's got two bronzers. One is more shimmery, one is more matte, and then the Rodeo Drive highlighter, which, you know, is one of the cult classics from Ofra. This one is matte, this one is shimmery. I swatched them this morning and I was like, well, which way are we going? I was like, well, I'm already doing a lot of glowy powder. So let's stick with the bronzer that's more matte toned and not shimmery. But doesn't that look pretty? It does, they both do, they both look pretty. So of course your girl went ahead and did the more natural bronzer here. And as you can see on my hand, it even has a little bit more of a cooler tone, maybe a little bit more natural. Your girl is not have a tan just yet, although she does have frizzy hair thanks to the humidity and possible rain that's we need desperately, but it's not coming. That's another story. But um, I put this one on today, the matte one, and I kind of layered it up, used a brush that I trust a lot and I think she's doing pretty good. I think it's pretty smooth. I am thinking it's faded a bit though. So this could have fallen off my radar simply because if it didn't last, I was like, I don't have time to reapply midday. I got stuff to do. So let's just do a little on camera work here. It's been hours since I put on makeup. Little refresher. Now my face also eats makeup. I always say that as well because I'm like, some people don't have the type of skin or face that's just like, I'm going to devour everything you stick on my face, so I feel like I need to reapply. But I will say my foundation is holding up really well today, so I don't think it's like one of those type of things. It might be just the powder. I don't know, I don't know. But this is the bronzer. I do like it so far, but if it's gonna keep disappearing on me, that could be why I forgot about it before. It could be why I forgot about it. That it disappears on my face, it may disappear out of my mind. So, I re am rediscovering this. Do you still have some of their bronzers? How do you feel about them? Because obviously they're known for their highlighters, known for it. And their blushes are also something I hear about pretty regularly when it comes to the Ofra line. But bronzers, I feel like I don't care a lot about. You know what I mean? So tell me if it's one of your favorite formulas and do you have this palette? Do you use it? Did you forget you had it too? Because I did. I must have received this in a subscription box is my guess some new purchases and I still have some more old things to tell you about that I have been loving but I also kind of need to tell you some stuff that I've not been loving so I'm about to tell you about an eyeshadow palette that I have rediscovered through my declutter series and I'm like oh my gosh this is aging I gotta use it or lose it and I'm gonna be sad when it goes so I want to tell you about that but first I really do have to say did you see my, my boxy charm it was the first you know, Boxy Charm by Ipsy, Ipsy by Boxy, Boxy Charm by Ipsy. <laughs> it's gonna take me a minute to get the name, guys. I'll get there. Uh, but it was really confusing though, because as I mentioned, the packaging that came in was just Ipsy branded, and there's whispers, or I saw some comments saying that Boxy Charm by Ipsy boxes are still coming, but they're still giving us old boxes. But I was like, then why didn't you give us a Boxy Charm box for what they're claiming? Boxy Charm is staying Boxy Charm according to their marketing. And when I got an Ipsy box, I was confused because I was still looking for the internal bag. So I was supposed to get a bag. It was a whole thing. Go check out that video if you missed it. I get really deep into it in the moment while I have it in front of me. And while I do need to touch on BoxyCharm by Ipsy as a whole, I do want to say really briefly, the eyeshadow palette that I got was a type I had received before from BoxyCharm, but I even heard from you guys, some of them are hit or miss depending on the type you get. For example, I 
love and have had in my best eyeshadow palette collections this seven cadet snap shadow from Fenty this is one of my favorites even though I can't open her on camera right now why are you making me look a fool why okay there she goes this is you know a very neutral palette this is something I have used either on its own pretty frequently or used to start an eye look because these shadows are blendable smooth layer well all of the things you want a shadow to do and it's just this little six six pan guy right I'm actually looking to see if I even kept the other one because I can't remember because I've been doing this eyeshadow palette declutter and I got a bad eyeshadow palette it was essentially one of these but in the smoky palette I was pretty excited about it though because I've been vibing with more cool tones and then when I tried it on I really couldn't get it to blend I couldn't get it to be smooth I tried multiple things Quite frankly, it just wasn't, it wasn't working. It was taking way too much effort and it didn't even look really mediocre towards the end of that moment. But by the end of the day, it was like, my face ate it, it was gone. Um, wasn't my jam. Wait, is it in here? Oh, I still have it, I do still have it, it's up here. Two of these shades in here also look identical. I tried several things to make this work. I don't think it looked very good. I didn't declutter it yet when I thought I had. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be keeping this to be honest because I just cleaned out my eyeshadow palette drawers and I have two of them. I'm not necessarily wanting for eyeshadow palettes in general, but especially something I'm not going to reach for or love. This is just really, it's pretty iffy with me. This was a big fail for me in general. So I think this is not going to be making it much longer, honestly, if I'm going to be 100% with you, which I always am. But the boxy charmness, I feel like I need to charge my battery really quick before I can touch on this part of the what I consider a little bit of a fail at this moment. I'm trying to still be open minded though. You know I'm a glass half full girl. Let me let me get my battery. Hold on. So my first I would say experience with the boxy charm by Ipsy could really just be summed up in that first word you heard me say confusion. Um, when the box came, it said Ipsy on it. I was really expecting some fresh branding. Um, this whole, you know, this whole month upon month lead up to interesting social media drops they were doing with the two boxes as people like talking and I did shorts videos on this. I've done long form videos on this. There was a lot of hype behind this merge. And as of this moment, after receiving my first Boxy Charm by Ipsy and first Ipsy bag to review for you. I'm still open-minded. I'm still excited to see what's coming in May, which I think that's when we're going to see the icon box, you know, come around, which is the new version of the boxy Lux. So I'm excited for that to see what happens. Also that first runaround is like that first go. I didn't expect perfection. I did not. I'll be really, really honest with you on that. I didn't expect it to go too swimmingly, mostly because we've seen this song and dance before, right? We're not new to this. We are OGs to the game. We know how it rolls. I'm just, I find myself a little sad and frustrated that multiple different types of choice going around that a lot of you guys were telling me about if you are a paying customer and you didn't get choice options somebody else did so it was confusing for you that would be confusing for me i didn't even know that was a factor um the branding of it really should have been ready to go again um i work in marketing and i have my company has acquired other companies i'm also not new to the concept of acquisitions and how it should work on the back end and what customers should see on the end result and it's like you gotta dot your i's and cross your t's um, it helps them that both brands were really well known, but I feel like the branding should have been a little bit more on point as far as what the customer received because a lot of people were confused on what is a beauty boost. They weren't properly billed for the old school premium, which is now called BoxyCharm Plus Boost, I believe is the full name. But so far, none of us have seen the actual BoxyCharm box going around. I even kept my BoxyCharm boxes from the last time I got BoxyCharm. Um, we're not seeing the recognition of, if you're gonna use the name BoxyCharm, you could even have the box say BoxyCharm by Ipsy down here or make the box this cool new thing where it's black and pink, which is both of their colors. So, and because we're not seeing those things, a lot of us are wondering, was this all fluff? Was this all just marketing spin to make us feel a little comfortable with the change? And is it just gonna essentially be Ipsy? You just didn't want to say we're taking away boxy charm because they're not really 
but are, it's the only branding and marketing we're gonna see say Ipsy. And even then, that wouldn't upset me too much if the billing were done accurately and a lot of you were telling me it wasn't, choices weren't done accurately. I'm still confused on how the heck a Beauty Boost works or premium. And a lot of, I, I did see, receive some comments of people saying, hey, why aren't you reviewing the premium box? Why, why don't I have that? And if you did not know, unless I guess you are a massive channel, um, they are not giving beauty premium, Beauty Boost, which is the old school premium, however they want to word it, which is so confusing. And if I'm confused, y'all are confused. They're not giving those to content creators, at least not of my size, I guess. So I can't tell you if it's worth your money because I'm still trying to decide if it's worth my money. And that's something that I've been very honest about, that I'm going to see how the next few months go before I decide to dip my toe into giving them some of my money because I'm also concerned about billing being done appropriately. I'm also concerned about is it going to be worth taking resources and money away from other parts of my channel that I want to review things for you to go with something that maybe if I'm going to tell you it's not worth your money, I don't want to waste my money either because I'd much rather do something you guys would want to see. So I don't know. I'm, I'm back and forth personally, back and forth. Um, but I was a little disheartened to see how the first month went. I did appreciate that they were putting new brands in there. Drunk Elephant is something that's really exciting to see. I am still hopeful though, because that's who I am as a person. I am still very glass half full. We're gonna see our first icon box very soon, which was what Lux was. So I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'm gonna keep it real with you, even though I know Ipsy has a much less drive to keep me on their PR. They do. Um, I was a boxy charm girl, not an Ipsy girl. And it feels a little like back in the day if you were a Backstreet Boy fan or an NSYNC fan, you two could not be friends, but we all were, or at least I was still friends with everybody. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be that dramatic, but they, I, I've talked about this in one of my long form videos, Boxy charm had people on PR. Whereas Ipsy had even less people on PR and there's only like so many hundreds getting the PR. I'm very grateful and so thankful that I am on that list because I did not think I was going to make it onto the PR list, but I'm very honest. I don't just say, hey guys, go put your money into this if I don't think it's worth it and I'm not going to be that person. So we're going to see. We're going to see and you know I'm going to keep it real with you. This was my little heart to heart about BoxyCharm and how I do kind of feel like this past month with a fail. I did not get really... Did I get anything? No, I did get stuff I liked. I did get stuff I liked. Like I said, I like the Ola Hendrickson. I have another thing in here I'm going to talk about. I love seeing some more options of stuff to try. It's not all bad, but it was a rough start. Okay, moving on. You've seen her. You know her name. But we're not even going to focus on the person. We're not going to focus on the brand because both of them are a little controversial. But what isn't on YouTube anymore? Um, the original Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. This is something that I have in a secondary eyeshadow palette drawer where I keep my big eyeshadow palettes. This is probably my biggest one, we're going to be honest. Um, but this is the formula you can't buy anymore. You can still buy this palette, but you cannot buy the original run formula. That was a whole thing we discovered a couple years back. I am using her. I rediscovered her very recently in my declutter series and she's really good. But I am starting to see other people who have the original run that I follow on like Instagram for like panning videos and they're like, I can't believe this is actually starting to turn. I'm gonna keep using it until I can't anymore. And I was like, oh my God, I have had this since 2017. I either need to use her or lose her. And I have been using a lot. I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes. That's one of my favorites. But I, I do wanna use this while I can. It is what's on my eyes today. She works great with a brush. She works great with the finger. She works great with blending. I am noticing like right now, I can already see my eye look has faded. Um, especially what was in my outer corner crease and kind of building it up. Where's my brush? She's not lasting like she used to. I mean, I've also aged. I'm, since, since I bought you in 2017, I'm tired too. I used to be able to hang all night too, and now your girl is tired. It's not that I don't get that. It's not that I don't get it. Um, It's just, uh, man, this was such a revelation, but also this, I, I'm still annoyed that we can't get the original formula anymore because it is so good and blends and lasts and all the things you really want it to do. But I'm already seeing just these natural tones fading. So I'm gonna use her while I can. And this is just maybe a little PSA. Like I said, I've been going through my collection for a while now. Find what you love, try to use up as much of it as you can because some stuff you can't rebuy. So you may as well use it 
use it up even if she was older. If she sparks the joy, you just, you just, you do what makes you happy, girl. You do it. Uh, speaking of, I repurchased some stuff in the Ulta 21 day sale. I didn't, I had, I had very low makeup boner drive. I used to say makeup boners a lot and some people like it, some people don't, but there are certain things that give me makeup boners, gets me excited for it. But my makeup boner meter was really low through this last Ulta sale, the Ulta 21 day sale. I was like, no, 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 no. There was not anything that was exciting to me except when I found out the Tarte Maracuja lip glosses were, these are the lip plump versions were going to be on sale. I actually had started an order that day and something happened where I got distracted and I went back and one of the shades I really wanted was gone. So I bought three of different ones. I think one's in my handbag. I purchased Primrose and White Peach. I have another one somewhere that's a little bit deeper. I think it's the Wild Berry. That sounds right. So good. I love this formula. If you see any of these Tarte Maracujas on sale, I still have some of the originals too. This one is in Orchid. This is the Juicy Lip. This one is the Lip Plumper. It does have a little bit of a tingling, a little bit of that cooling effect. I think this is such a great formula. It does plump the lips. I do think this plumps more than this guy a little bit. And you feel the tingling just a touch. Not like tingle tingle, like the burning sensation, nothing like that. Just like a cooling vibration. I'm not even gonna call it a tingle. A cooling vibration is how I would word something like this. I got these and I love them. I highly recommend them. I'm gonna have them in my links below because they're so good. If you find them on a sale or if you don't find them on a sale, they're, it's, they're so good I would tell you, you don't need to wait for a sale. Although I'm not a fan of when the color stickers start to come off because this one's already coming off and I'm like, if I don't know what color you are, I, I, I need to keep that. So I gotta glue that down. All right, so <laughs> throwing it back to Ipsy, not to give us all a little whiplash here, but this is how I do my makeup. One of the last things I do on my face is up and on some mascara after I curl my lashes. And my biggest beef with Ipsy for a long time was that it's a lot of minis and I am a creature of habit. So I either use the stuff I love or if something really draws me in and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I cannot wait to use this all the time. That's how something new in my collection will be a favorite. But if it's a mini, more likely than not, I'm gonna forget about it because I'm very out of sight, out of mind. I'm very shiny object syndrome. So when I got this mascara from again, Real Her, the same creator of my favorite powder right now, the Set Your Goals one, I saw that they had a mascara in there and I almost didn't even try it on because I do have some mascaras open and I was like, I gotta use stuff, you know, I gotta use stuff. Girl, when I tell you I have not even used any of these, it's because this is all I've been using. I have not forgotten her because she's that good. So you know I gotta tell you about her. You know I do. Let's talk about the I Am Beautiful Mascara from Real Her. This is for volume and length. And her, her wand is just like, not even the type of wand I usually like. It's a little bit more of that spiky version, but this formula is so darn good. Put this on, I can layer it up if I want. I do curl my lashes ahead of time. I do a couple of pumps, get them up. And then what I do, oh, I didn't do this yet before this video. So I'm gonna have to do it now at the end of this video. After I let them dry too, I'll go back in. And this does still have some curl to them, but I'll bump it, look at that. Look at that. She just pumps right up, pumps right up. Like I can just immediately see such a difference and then they kind of stay up even longer. And I, okay, so this is where the lazy girl in me comes in. So don't judge me too harshly because I can't, I just don't. I'm, I'm not accepting judgment today. So at the end of the day, my lashes still look great, right? They're not as lifted as they are in this moment. They drop a bit because that's how my eyelashes are. It's who they are as a person. I can't change them, but I can just tweak them a little bit here and there with makeup. So they will drop a little bit more, but the lashes still look full. They look long and they do have some still curl to them. Not all mascaras can do that for my face. And then I'll wash my face. I say it again. I wash my face. I usually do a double cleanse. I do a toner. I have a nighttime routine. But this formula is still so flexible, but also long lasting that the next day, <laughs> I, on my top lashes, will still have some curl to them. So they're not just straight, they have a little bit more color and they have some curl. So when I'm having my skincare days, which happens a lot lately, and this could be why I'm doing a lot of skincare days, because these are brightening my skin so good, 
And then I use a little bit of this, well, a decent amount of this Ola Hendrickson under the eyes for brightening with this banana stick. And then my lashes are already darker and still curled from the day before. Yes, I washed my face. I'm going to say it again. Don't think I'm nasty because I'm not. But it just, like, the remnants that I swear I got off, it's still there. It just went up and out. It just, I'm just like, I look awake. I look ready to go. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of brows up in the front because that's where your girl still struggles a little bit. And then I feel like I'm, I'm not just like a bare canvas that looks like she just is one of those bad paintings that looks a wreck and you need to fix it in the morning. I don't know. That's just how my brain works. This mascara. This is the only mascara I've used. Have I used a different one since I got it? I don't think I have. And this is tiny. I've had to seek it out. Like, where is it? Where is it? And I have other good mascaras that I like that I need to get back to using or losing because that's how the life of a mascara works. You use it or you lose it. You got three months at the most. Oh, you know these videos get chatty, guys. I do have one more thing to tell you guys about. And I, you know, I'm always wearing some jewelry. I'm always wearing some bangles. And Otter Spirit is a brand that I, I'm, I like a good crystal. I like some good crystal jewelry. And these stones are really fantastic. These are the beaded bracelets from Otter Spirit. They're natural gemstone bracelets with genuine grade A, double A, and stainless steel. Each one of them can have like an intention to, there's like a confidence pack, an adventure pack, an anti-anxiety pack. Oh girl, maybe I would need that one because I'm always working on it. But I do have a Howlite bracelet in here that is supposed to be good for anxiety. I also have a Labdarite bracelet in here, a darker one. They are all separate, so you can wear them individually or mix and match. And then this one here is a Moonstone bracelet as well. They've held up really well. And I will say I have had some, you know, stone bracelets that I have in my collection that I've gotten from like TJ Maxx, stuff like that, that the quality isn't really there and maybe they start to, when I take them on and off, break a little bit or stretch. These do not do that. They stretch enough to get them off your hand, but then they pop right back in. I really like them. I think they're beautiful and they're definitely well made and good quality because I do like a good stone bracelet. I tend to mix and match a lot of my jewelry and this is one that I have been right, really wearing quite a bit on camera and off camera. So I definitely wanted to shout them out with you guys and let me tell you about a discount. I did send these to me though. I'm always honest with you guys when someone sends me something, but I don't always talk about the things that I get. So this one I really do like. This one you can get Otter Spirit. I'm gonna leave them linked below, but if you use my coupon code Nicole20, you're gonna get 20% off. And I do love that. They do have bundles you can get or individual bracelets. I'm really enjoying these. So if you're someone who tends to like a little bangle in your life, check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching and going through my monthly faves and fails with me. I always love to know if you guys are still loving these videos. So hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you like these type of videos. I stopped doing them for a little bit just cause I was running out of time, but then a lot of people were like, tell us what you're loving again. I miss that. So please let me, keep me posted if these are the types of videos you do want to see on my channel along with my boxy charms. And we still got a declutter coming guys. So let me know which declutter you guys are wanting to see next. Bye friends. Ha ha ha!